why. So, <laughs> um, Steve Leeds. So I'm set up to go on a national radio tour with Steve Leeds to visit the, the program directors from all the alternative rock stations uh, in the country. I think that we were hitting 18 cities. Uh, so it was pretty significant. Sometimes there would be like two flights in a day and um, which was so stressful to me and I could not, absolutely could not get on a small plane. And when I say small plane, I mean small jet. I can't even, if, if I see like a small jet, I can't get on it. There's just so, they had to be big planes everywhere and um, poor Steve had no idea. And so every time we would fly, and sometimes it would be two, sometimes three flights in a day, I would grab him by the arm or his sweater and just hang on for dear life and cry and shake and, like, panic. And this poor guy, this poor guy. And um, every, time, every time we would get off the plane, like, his one arm would be of his, of his whatever shirt that he would be wearing would be, like, four inches past his hand from like me just pulling it out of shape and then he would have to walk around with one arm longer than the other and um but um it was a good time though um I also am deathly afraid of natural disasters and I do remember uh we got to Nashville and there were tornadoes um there were tornado sirens going off outside of our hotel room. So of course, um, I kept running back and forth to Steve Lee's <laughs> hotel room, banging on the door, telling him that we need to leave immediately and go into the stairwell. We need to leave immediately and go into the stairwell. There's a tornado out there. And he would be like, you're fine. It's fine. No tornado is going to hit this hotel. I promise. And I'm like, I'm going to the stairwell. And so it was just me running back and forth to and from the stairwell. And finally, like, I banged on his door and I said, listen, I just have to tell you, if we die tonight, it was really great knowing you and going on this tour with you. And he's like, would you just go to sleep? And I remember we had to get up the next morning. The tornado did not hit. Um, I had probably had like two hours of sleep. And at that next um, <laughs> radio day, I remember... Um, walking into the radio station and seeing a sofa and just like laying down on this program director's sofa being like, yeah, can you just, can you just play my record, please? <laughs> you know, I'm going to take a nap. I'm going to take a nap on the sofa and you just please play my record, you know, and out, um, nap. And the program director, director was like, what the hell, you know? And, and, um, so there's other funny stories about that tour. Um, but the thing was that happened that I learned is that um, <laughs> alternative radio did not exist anymore. That new metal had come into the picture, particularly Limp Bizkit had come into and taken over and dominated every radio station, every alternative radio station pretty much in the world and program directors were literally telling me that because I was a woman, they could not play my record. They liked the song, but they could not play the record because I was a woman and they they don't play women on their station anymore. They took off Alanis Morissette and Hole and the Cranberries and Sarah McLaughlin and um, and then they changed the names, the, the format changed from being called alternative radio to modern rock radio. And there was just no place for me to go after that if radio would not touch my record. And that was the end of that record. Because once radio says no, there's no chance for it. That was it. That record was done.